there is a lot we can achieve as a country using technology, but this needs a lot of commitment. Managing Director of System Spec, John Obaru, shares his thoughts on ways of supporting the Nigerian software industry. I started by asking him if our software industry is really making progress. Enjoy our chat. I believe we're making progress, not as much as one would have loved, but um, there are bright lights here and there. Uh, there's a school in Anambra, I can't remember the name now, that won the award in the US, competing with about 2,000 other applications. That was a good statement on behalf of Nigeria. So a lot of things are happening. Our young people are doing very amazing and interesting things. And that certainly is a sign of progress. Now, a number of pioneers like you have argued that we need a national software policy. What's your opinion? Uh, whether you call it a policy framework or whatever, uh, we just need government to encourage local players. Whether you need a policy to do that is a different thing because we have many policies in Nigeria that nobody reads anyway. So if you believe you need to document it, by documenting it, it will make government pay more attention to it, so be it. But personally, I believe more in the action rather than in the writings. So as a player in the industry, what would you recommend? What I would recommend is that government should begin to celebrate our little successes here and there. Okay. There are a number of good software that have come out of Nigeria. They should be celebrated both by established firms and fintech startups. As many success stories as we have, if you don't tell your story, nobody will tell it for you. And everybody will keep referring to Africa in negative light. And all the things that are coming out will remain on that plate. Our government should celebrate our stories, should push out our own success stories for use, not just in Nigeria, but even outside Nigeria. Why do you think we celebrate foreign software solutions? I hate to use the word inferiority complex that believes uh, it has to be from the West to be good, and especially if it has to do with technology. Okay. So there is an unconscious feeling in many people that for them to use technology, it has to come from the West. But especially in the area of software, what people need to realize is that software is not as much of technology as it is of creativity. It's like an art. And this certainly is an area where many people recognize that Nigerians have done well. Nigerians have done well in art, in creativity. And one of the things that throws that up is what we've seen in the uh, in Nollywood industry, for instance. So if you view software that way, then you would know that there are a lot of creative things that are coming out of Nigeria. We still have a number of foreign software solutions powering our critical national infrastructure. How can we change this? If I look at the economy of the country, we have a foreign software from a tiny country of two, three million people, Estonia, driving our central accounting system. Okay. We have um, the payroll system from the US, okay? We have um, the central banking system, one from Sweden, another from uh, India, okay? And we, we integrate with all these systems. We are the only Nigerian player in the middle, okay, of all of this. So I understand and I know that these solutions are not rocket science. They could well have been developed by Nigerian companies. But you know what? People are more receptive to these foreign ones, which, by the way, with the exception of one of them, the other three, four that I mentioned are grossly inefficient. Listen first to the local. Okay. Be sure the local cannot, cannot, cannot do it before you open the door to the external world. In software, for instance, uh, I would say if a local software can do 50, 60 percent of the requirement. They should be given priority over a foreign software that can do 100 percent. Okay. I mean, this software that you imagine are 100 percent fit, if any such a thing exists, didn't get there overnight. Okay. 
they went through a cycle. Initially, they were not as good you know, as they've turned out to be. But somebody gave them a platform. So we need to give our software companies that platform to make mistakes. Okay? We need to give them platforms to learn. And then they get better. If you don't allow that to happen, we would continue to serve the Western world. And we spend tons of money renewing these licenses annually. Oh, yeah. We spend lots of money, which, again, the irony is that even when you go for bids of some sort, if a local company quotes half as much as a foreign software, it will be described as expensive. Okay. So you don't want to fund the local companies. You don't want to give them opportunities, but you keep condemning them. We need to change that narrative. Your software solution, Remitai, is one of the ones powering the TSA. How did it all start? TSA has been very successful today. But what many people don't know is the kind of ordeal we're going through at the backside, which if it were a foreign company, trust me, they would have walked away. If they received one-tenth of the treatment we've received, they would have walked away. But because we're a Nigerian company, we believe in this country. And if this is our own little contribution, let's take it out. The first embarrassment we had at the beginning of the day, again, because people didn't understand the role of fintech. They didn't realize that uh, uh, there's a new game in town, that fintech were going to, was going to redefine how payments and collections were made. We were painted black, and the focus was more on... 1% fee, uh, we had a lot of Senate bashing, a lot of press bashing, all because of this 1%. What many people did not realize was that at that point in time, several other collections in Nigeria were in the region of 5 to 10% as a minimum. In fact, there was one institution that the collection rate was 40%, a federal government institution. Okay? 40%. So if we were now doing it at 1%. And because people didn't understand technology, a whole lot of noise. That, you know, it took quite some time to reasonably get out of that. And um, we're operating a model, for instance, where under electronic payment, fees are not being paid online. Okay. Nobody does that in the world. Electronic payment is synonymous with instant debit, instant credit. But here we are, we're providing the platform to government and waiting to beg to be paid. Not right. Not many, no, there's not a single foreign company that would go through that. But because we believe in this country, uh, we are expecting that things will change. Gradual, but we expect that things will change. You have been at this for close to four decades. What would you have to say to startups who are just starting out on this journey? First, you must enjoy the game. Software development you must enjoy. Don't look at it in the short term. You may be fortunate to hit a big hit, okay? But software development is a very painstaking business. Because when you are developing codes, one wrong dot somewhere uh, destroys the game. So you need to be able to think through a lot of details, walk through a lot of details, and make sure that things are as clean as much as possible. And um, that takes a belief uh, in, in what you're doing. If you do that, success will come along with you. But don't focus on money as a primary driver. Thank you very much, Fred. I have been chatting with the managing director of System Specs, John Obaru whose passion to solve problems using technology cannot be mistaken. He believes that Nigeria should get into the habit of protecting her own technology companies like other countries have done, while supporting them to grow and go international. It is not smart for a country with numerous challenges to continue to spend billions of naira annually servicing foreign firms and renewing licenses for solutions that can be easily developed locally. Not everyone appreciates the Chinese model, but it truly does have its merit. That's our show for today. But the conversation continues online. Please follow us on social media. Don't forget these and other editions can be seen on the channel's TV YouTube account or by my blog cfatech.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukameka Agbata. <laughs>
Thank you.